Hello and welcome to your in-depth weekly horoscope for week commencing the 8th of August for the Sun or the Ascendant using Western Tropical Astrology. As ever, I'm going to give you a broad framework and some key themes to look out for, but please stay with me. I will then dive deep to give you in forensic detail each of the 12 zodiac signs from Aries through to Pisces. Now this week begins with the Sun in the sign of Leo. Leo is where the sun really prospers the most. It's very much about self-expression. If we cast our mind back to the new moon of the 28th and 29th of July, if we set our intentions then, it could be that we've seen some real progress around where we want to show flair, artistry, or just mix and mingle more, socialize, and enjoy the good things in life. But this week, of course, across the 11th and 12th, depending on where you are in the world, the position of the full moon in Aquarius is of the collective. So whatever we set out to try to achieve at the end of July, it now comes out in terms of the results, or we could get a, a slice of reality in response. The problem is that Saturn, that cold, rather detached and limiting influence is directly opposite the sun and pretty close to the moon as well, of course. So what this creates, I think, is the collective uh, consciousness of us all, because the sign of Aquarius is about us as a group, that is, I feel, going to start to feel the impact of all that energy which really peaked at the end of July and right at the start of August, that collective in the sign of Taurus. However, despite the fact that Mars, Uranus and the North Node are in a T-square with this full moon this week, it is true that Mars and Pluto are actually in an incredibly enabling angle. So if we have got some plans that we feel are very clear, been well worked out, well researched, and we can see how we could make some tangible progress. Our motivation to move forwards with those plans can be absolutely incredible with that particular alliance. However, Venus, the planet of love and relating, coming to the end of its journey through the sign of Cancer, is opposed by Pluto. This can lead to some offers or some suggestions perhaps in the professional sphere, that sound very promising, but we need to make sure that they're not in some way, uh, 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 or they don't in some way have some catches that are not immediately obvious. So charm and uh, persuasion can mask a deeper motive. That could be a, around a monetary offer, could be around a romantic relationship or even a sexual attraction. So we just need to be aware of that because with Mars and Pluto in a trine, our desire side is going to be so strong. Now this tempered a little bit by the more spiritual energies of Neptune, which is soothing off Mars a little bit, and also Pluto, quite frankly. But by Thursday, Venus arrives in the sign of Leo. I think Venus in Leo is potentially lovely. Now, we've all had to really react in so many myriad of ways to deal with the last few years because of COVID. Perhaps it would be an opportune time to spoil ourselves when it comes to our personal appearance, our wardrobe, if we can afford to do it. So Venus moving into Leo is a good uh, transit to show off a little bit, to strut our stuff, uh, to try to give ourselves a little bit of a personal boost. But there's no doubting that the full moon across those two days, depending on where you are, and that opposition with Saturn can be pretty testing. So maybe the things that we have been trying to do since the end of July through to now could go through a tempering reality. Maybe it is the cost of living that's going to impact on us all. I think generally this is a week which suggests we should be a little bit more risk averse. So to be more cautious with our resources, despite that enormously motivated link between Mars and Pluto. But remember, that's in two Earth signs, Taurus and Capricorn. So that's very much about keeping it real. So 
I just feel that this is a week where we could be a little bit disappointed about some of our friends. Maybe if a love relationship isn't going quite as well as we'd like, there could be a point where we really question things. And because Venus is initially opposite Pluto, if it is to do with who has the power in the tie, that could be something to discuss. But charm is always important with Venus and Venus moving into Leo is very uh, gregarious and it does give us uh, some levitation to the intensity of some of these other influences. If you would like to ascend above this zodiac broadcast and embrace more serious astrology, if you give me three pieces of personal birth data of time, date and place, I can give you a roadmap that can guide you for the rest of your life. But now, my special offer has been improved even more because I will give you your year 2023 personal forecast and the rest of year 2022 free with 30% off in my special package. Please see the link beneath this video. Finally, if you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honored if you did so now. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. If you've already done so, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So Gemini, your week commencing the 8th of August forecast sees that full moon, which triggers your third and ninth house axes. Very much about everyday communication where the sun is and the truth of situations where Aquarius is. Interesting because Aquarius is very much about those higher truths. With Saturn in the mix, it suggests there could be a frank discussion uh, to be had this week. Venus is going to be moving into Leo later in the week, which can bring the potential for a kind of calming and soothing of any tensions. But before that, Venus is in an opposition with Pluto. Now, this is a fascinating one. You could have an offer this week. It could be linked to a financial incentive. It may be linked to a romantic interest. But somehow or another, there's a sense of excitement or fated energy around this uh, potential. But with Mars buried away in your 12th house, some of your emotions still feel quite turbulent. And that's forging uh, a really powerful link with Pluto, deeply buried in your eighth house. So I feel that there's going to be a lot of intensity around this week. Some of it, just being really truthful, could be quite sexual. You may find that some kind of connection that you have, whether it's to the past, someone from the past, or whether it's with someone now, it can be quite electric, but somehow there may be uh, an inhibition. It could be because someone you're drawn to lives at a distance, is not truly available, has a different value system to you. Some kind of block can prevent this tumult of desire to really flow out in the way you want. And that, of course, can provide a lot of frustration. And it's because your 12th house, which is the hidden side of your situation, is competing with your intellect and your philosophies. And that's hard. You know, we can think things, being an air sign, it's very much about thinking, the articulation of ideas. But this week's chart has that thinking and communication going on but a whole load of very deep boiling energies in the background as well. So some conversations actually may be much more loaded and much more meaningful than they first appear to be.